Hey there, pilots! This is Dot with Sam, and today we'll be looking at the history of the Tupolev SB-2M and its flight characteristics in War Thunder. The Tupolev Ant-40, also known by its service name Tupolev SB and development codename TSAGI-40, was a high-speed twin-engine three-seat monoplane bomber, first flown in 1934. The design was very advanced, but lacked refinement, much to the dismay of crews and maintenance personnel, and of Stalin, who pointed out that there are no trivialities in aviation. Numerically, the most important bomber in the world in the late 1930s, the SB was the first modern stress-skin aircraft produced in quantity in the Soviet Union, and probably the most formidable bomber of the mid-1930s. Many versions saw extensive action in Spain, the Republic of China, Mongolia, Finland, and at the beginning of the war against Germany in 1941. It was also used in various duties in civil variants, as trainers, and in many secondary roles. Successful in the Spanish Civil War because it outpaced most fighters, the aircraft was obsolete by 1941. By June 1941, 94% of bombers in the Red Army Air Force were SBs. In 1933, the Soviet Air Force Ministry issued an outline requirement for a high-speed bomber. Work on this proposal at TSAGI began in January 1934. The SB was designed and developed in the Tupolev KB Design Bureau. Two versions were planned, with Wright Cyclone radial engines and with the Hispano liquid-cooled B-12 engines. The skills gained in the design of the MI-3 and the DI-8 aircraft were widely used. The first two prototypes were designed as Ant-40.1 and Ant-40.2. The Cyclone-powered prototype flew first on October 7, 1934, with the first hispano susia powered prototype, which featured a larger wing and flew on December 30, 1934, demonstrating superior performance. The second Hispano-powered aircraft, the Ant-40, was considered a production prototype, and its performance was impressive. It was, however, plagued by teething problems, leading unhappy test personnel to cover the Ant-40 with placards listing the aircraft's defects prior to a visit by the Commissioner for Heavy Industry. On seeing these placards, the commissioner summoned Tupolev to a meeting at the Kremlin to discuss these shortfalls. Tupolev stated that most of these defects were trivial. On hearing this, Joseph Stalin said, There are no trivialities in aviation. Everything is serious, and any uncorrected triviality could lead to the loss of an aircraft and its crew. The first production aircraft, designated SB, rolled off the production line before the end of 1935 and before Ant-40 had completed its flight test program. The aircraft entered full production in 1936 and was produced in two plants, State Aircraft Factory No. 22 at Moscow and No. 125 at Iskirks until 1941. Despite the fact that assembly lines were plagued with a constant string of modifications, some 400 SBs were delivered by the end of 1936 a number of these being diverted to Spain, and 24 Russian squadrons were in the process of working up with the new bomber. Giving excellent performance in the Spanish Civil War, it acquired the popular name Catherine. In 1937, negotiations were successfully concluded between the Soviet and Czechoslovak governments for the supply of SB bombers and a license for local production in exchange for the right to produce the Skoda 75mm model 1936 mountain gun. The version of the SB to be supplied to and subsequently licensed built was the Avia B-71. 60 aircraft were to be flown to Czechoslovakia by mid-1938. The planned licensed production program took a decidedly leisurely course despite an increasingly dangerous political situation. By March 15, 1939, when Germany occupied Bohemia and Moravia, not one Czech-built aircraft had been delivered. 
Development of the SB continued, meanwhile, with revisions being made to reflect the lessons of early operations in Spain, as problems were encountered in converting pilots to fly the SB. A trainer version, the USB, was built in September 1937, with a modified nose, with an open cockpit for an instructor and dual controls. Problems were also encountered with the aircraft's armament, with the nose guns having limited traverse and so being little use against head-on attacks. Later aircraft were modified with a better firing field. From 1940, the dorsal gun position was replaced by an enclosed turret, while the ventral gun position, which was difficult to use effectively, was also modified. The aircraft was also progressively fitted with improved engines. At first, it was equipped with the Klimov M100, a license-built version of the Hispano 12 YBRS engine, but this was soon replaced by a more powerful M100A, and from 1938 by the yet more powerful M103. While the engine installation of the SB2M103 initially retained the drag-inducing frontal radiators of the M100-powered aircraft, an improved engine installation was developed with the radiators slung under the engines. In an attempt to further improve the performance of the SB, which by 1939 was becoming obsolete, the development of two second-generation versions were authorized, a direct replacement for the SB and a specialized dive bomber. The level bomber, known as the SNMN or MMN, had a new wing of reduced wing area and was powered by a more powerful Klimov M105 engine. Performance was little better than the standard aircraft, however, and it was abandoned. The dive bomber, designated SBRK, was similar to the MMN, but was fitted with dive brakes. Testing was successful, and it was ordered in production. Even though the SB was no longer a state-of-the-art aircraft, production continued to increase through 1939 and 1940, as the Soviet Union tried to build up the strength of their air forces to compete with the growing threat of Nazi Germany, with almost 4,000 being built in these two years. The SB was phased out of production in early 1941, being replaced by the Petlikov PE-2. A total of 5,695 were built at Factory No. 22 of Moscow before it was evacuated to Kazan, while Factory No. 125 built a further 1,136. The SB was an all-metal monoplane powered by two Klimov M100 12-cylinder water-cooled engines, which drove fixed-pitched two-bladed metal propellers. The engines were provided with honeycomb-type frontal radiators enclosed by vertical thermostat-controlled cooling shutters. At an early production stage, the M100 engine gave way to an improved M100A engine, driving ground-adjustable three-pitch propellers with speed being boosted to 423 km an hour at 4,000 meters. Because of its broad, high aspect wing ratio that gave it a good altitude performance, Russian crews nicknamed it the pterodactyl. There were a number of foreign customers for the SB. They were mostly satisfied with the aircraft's performance. There were some complaints about high noise level, cramped crew compartments, hard undercarriage suspension, and in particular about the front gunner's position that could only be reached through a hatch under the fuselage. Consequently, in case of a ditching or belly landing, the gunner could not escape. While only 54 SBs had been delivered to Soviet Air Forces by July 1, 1936, this did not stop the new Tupolev bomber being amongst the first shipments of military equipment sent by the Soviet Union to support the Spanish Republicans when the Spanish Civil War broke out on July 17, 1936. An initial batch of 31 SBs arrived aboard a Soviet freighter in October of 1936. Flying their first mission, a bombing raid of four SBs against Tablada Airfield, Seville, on October 28. The SBs were used to equip the 12th wing of the Spanish Republican Air Force, which at first was mainly manned by Soviet volunteers under Soviet control. The SB could outpace the Fiat CR-32 and the Heinkel HE-51 biplane fighters of the Nationalist forces, and was therefore difficult to intercept. 
with dives from high altitude being the only way to intercept the SB. On May 29, 1937, two SBs attacked a German pocket battleship Deutschland, mistaking it for nationalist cruisers, killing 31 and injuring a further 83 German sailors. In June and July, a second consignment of 31 SBs were received, allowing the 12th Wing to return to full strength and a new unit to be established. The delivery of Messerschmitt Bf 109s to re-equip the German Condor Legion meant that the SB could no longer evade nationalist fighters by sheer speed, and losses rose. A third and final batch of 31 SBs arrived in June 1938, allowing operations to continue, although losses continued to be high. By the time the Civil War ended in March 1939, 73 SBs had been lost, 40 of them to enemy action. 19 SBs were taken over by nationalists and used to form a bomber squadron. Although some were re-engined with French Spano Susia 12 YBRS engines to aid maintenance, they were still subject to spare shortage. And in April 1943, only three were airworthy. When Junkers JU-88s were received in December 1943, the remaining SBs were used for occasional training flights until withdrawn and scrapped in 1948. In July of 1937, the Second Sino-Japanese War broke out. The Soviet Union signed the Sino-Soviet Non-Aggression Pact on J August 21, 1937, and as part of this agreement, supplied large amounts of military equipment to the Chinese nationalists, as well as deploying complete Air Force units nominally manned by Soviet volunteers. An initial delivery of 62 SBs was made in September and October of 1937, with combat operations by Soviet forces starting in December with attacks on Japanese ships. On February 23, 1938, to celebrate Soviet Army Day, Soviet SBs carried out a long-range attack on Japanese airfields on Taiwan, claiming 40 Japanese aircraft destroyed on the ground. A further 60 SBs were delivered to China in early 1938, these being heavily used to attack Japanese forces during the Battle of Wuhan. Losses were heavy, forcing the Chinese SB units to be temporarily withdrawn from combat. The Soviet units operating the SB over China re-equipped with the DB-3 in 1939, allowing their SBs to be transferred to Chinese units, but the Chinese made limited use of these reinforcements. The Soviet Union supplied a further 100 SBs in 1941, just before it signed the Soviet-Japanese Neutrality Pact. The SB was gradually phased out of frontline operations against the Japanese with the delivery of more modern American bombers from 1942, being partially replaced by Lockheed Hudson's and B-25 Mitchells. Limited numbers of SBs continued in non-combat use, including operations against opium plantations, before being used against the Communists when the Chinese Civil War flared up in 1945, being finally withdrawn in 1946. As well as the aircraft operated by volunteers against the Japanese over China, SBs were used in combat against the Japanese during the fighting near Lake Kazan on the border between Soviet Union and Manchuria in July and August of 1938, one SB being lost. Fighting between Soviet and Japanese forces broke out again at Kok and Gol in eastern Mongolia in May 1939. While SBs were not involved in the May air battles, where the Soviet forces received heavy losses, two regiments of SBs were deployed to Mongolia in June, flying their first missions on June 26th. SBs were used heavily against Japanese forces when they attacked in early July. Soviet SB regiments consisted of a mixture of early and later SBs, whose differing speeds caused problems in maintaining formation, while Japanese Ki-27 fighters proved adept in exploiting the poor defensive armament of the SB, with the radio operator operating both the dorsal and ventral guns. To minimize losses to Japanese fighters, the Soviets changed tactics, flying SB missions at over 6,100 meters where it was difficult for the Japanese to intercept. 
SBs continued to be used against the Japanese as the Soviets and Mongolian forces commanded by Georgi Sukhov carried out a successful offensive until a ceasefire was signed in September of 1939. On November 30, 1939, the Soviet Union attacked Finland in the conflict that became known as the Winter War. With the forces deployed against Finland, including several hundred SBs, losses were heavy with bomber formations often unescorted and forced to operate at low level where they are vulnerable to Finnish anti-aircraft fire and fighters. While in 1936 in Spain, the SB could outpace enemy fighters, but now it was vulnerable and poorly armed. SBs were fitted with skis for operation from snow-covered airfields, slowing the aircraft and making them even more vulnerable, while the need to wear heavy winter clothing made the gunner's job even harder. By the end of the 15-week war, at least 100 SBs had been lost, with the Finns claiming nearly 200 shot down, 92 of them to Finnish fighters. When Germany invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941, re-equipment with more modern aircraft such as the PE-2 had begun. Still, 94% of the Soviet operational bomber force was equipped with SBs, with 1,500 to 2,000 SBs deployed along the western border districts of the Soviet Union. The Luftwaffe started Operation Barbosa with a coordinated strikes against 66 major Soviet airfields, destroying a large portion of the Soviet air strength on the ground or air on the first day of the invasion. The SBs that survived the carnage of the first day continued to be poorly used, many being frittered away in unescorted low-level attacks against German tanks, where the SBs' relatively large size and lack of armor made it highly vulnerable to German light flak, while German fighters continued to take a heavy toll. Within a few days, losses forced most of the remaining SBs to switch to night attacks. SBs continued to be used in the defense of Leningrad and Moscow, mainly at night by attacking German artillery. By December 1941, almost all of the SBs had either been replaced or lost, although it remained in large-scale use until March 1942 in the north against Finland. SBs continued to be used for non-combat roles such as supply dropping, glider towing, and training, and continued in use in the Far East until 1945. Many Soviet SBs crashed or force landed on Finnish soil during the Winter War, with the Finns salvaging as many aircraft as possible, with those in the best condition being sent for possible repair for the use of the Finnish Air Force. By the time of the continuation war against the Soviet Union, when Finland moved to recover the territory lost in the Winter War, five SBs had been repaired, and a further three added later being used to equip maritime patrols and attack missions. These aircraft were supplemented by a further 16 SBs purchased from Germany, who had captured them during the initial weeks of the invasion of the Soviet Union. These SBs employed the first airdrop depth charges used in combat. Finland lost seven SBs to accidents during the continuation war, with none being lost in combat, with Finnish SBs claiming three Soviet submarines and a 4,000-ton merchant ship sunk. In War Thunder, there are four variants of the SB-2M. The 100, the 103, the 103U MV-3, and the 105. All four are rank 1 with a battle rating of 2.0. All of the SB-2M variants are defended by a nose-mounted turret armed with two 7.62mm machine guns, a dorsal gunner armed with one 7.62mm machine gun, and a waist gunner armed with one 7.62mm machine gun. The SB-2M100 can be loaded with either six 100kg bombs, two 250kg bombs, or one 500kg bomb. The other three variants can be fitted with either six 100kg bombs, two 250kg bombs, one 500kg bomb, two 500kg bombs, and two 250kg bombs, three 500kg bombs, two 250kg and six 100kg bombs, one 500kg and two 250kg bombs, or four 250-kilogram bombs. 
The maximum speed of all four aircraft ranged from 405 to 409 kilometers per hour, and a turn time of 25.5 seconds. And climb rates range from 5 to 8 meters per second, depending on loadout. The SV-2M is a very durable bomber and is relatively quick, but you will need that durability and speed because of your poor defensive armament. Don't expect to scare away fighters that attack you. Make use of your climb speed and good bomb load and stay out of reach of enemy fighters. I hope that this information has proved helpful. If you liked the video, please do like the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and if you think anyone else would be interested in this video, don't be afraid to share it. This is Dauntless Sam, thanks for watching.